Hey everyone, I'm James. I'm from the Cloud Enablement team at Geoscience Australia. And GA, you might have seen Anthony Stinziani, our CIO, talking this morning. Uh, so you would have seen us in the news about MH370. We were involved in the, in the collection of data for MH370, and this is some of the visualization from that. So GA, we've got around 650 staff. They're all really technical. I've never seen so many PhDs in all my life. I'm the only person in the room without a PhD sometimes. We've got about 40 AWS accounts, 45 as of today. We added five since these slides got made. And we've had a 400% growth rate in the last two years in our AWS spend. So we're creating new accounts all the time. So before I talk about this, I'm going to talk about how we used to create AWS accounts. And Blake kind of alluded to it, but I'm going to go through it in excruciating detail because we had to do this a lot. So first, you have to have a credit card. So that's already a massive roadblock for a lot of bureaucracies. So some people have billing, some people uh, uh, budget codes, some people don't. So have a credit card. Have a unique group email address. This is also tough for a lot of bureaucracies. For us, it involved raising a ticket to help desk and having that ticket sit in the exchange queue for maybe two weeks while it got actioned. It's just a group email address. It's not high priority, right? You've got to enter your contact details, so your country of origin, your cell phone number, your favorite color, your best friend's dog's name, or whatever. You've got to enter those payment details. You've got to enter a, a capture to prove you're not a robot. And then you've got to receive an automated phone call from a robot, because irony. You've got to handshake the consolidated billing account. So that's a manual process from both sides as well, so from the person who's creating the account and from the, the cloud team who owns the consolidated billing account. And then you've got to manage the root credentials, including MFA. Does the person who created the account do that? If so, how do they get the credentials to us? Is it on a Post-it note? I, I don't know. Anyway, the Kanban team owns all the Post-it notes. So. so our solution is self-service AWS account creation. And just for full disclosure, it's not self-service yet. We're still waiting on SSO on the S3 website. So we're doing that with our connecting our IDP to Cognito. Um, but the entire rest of the process is fully automated. It just needs one of us from the cloud team to kick it off. So what does it look like? So our solution involves a user. Does my laser pointer work? Maybe. Oh, yeah. So our user hits the Route 53 DNS. Route 53 directs them to the CloudFront distribution. And then CloudFront directs them to the S3 website. The S3 website is what has the form. They enter all their details in the form. And the form hits the API gateway, which invokes a Lambda function. So the Lambda function has a, a bunch of Bodo in there. Bodo calls the organization's API, uh, creates a new account. It then switches roles into that account and creates the first user and assigns them a temporary password. And the whole thing is in Terraform. So like everything we're doing at GA these days, it's, it's all in Terraform. So we can create a whole stack in a single command, in just a single Terraform apply. We can destroy the whole thing using Terraform destroy. So this is what it looked like. So we brought this up uh, just to see what it looked like. And then we brought it straight the heck back down because we had no SSO and it was really scary. Uh, so all you've got to do is you've got to enter your account name, your email address, your username, and your password, your temporary password. So here I created a new account at 12.12, 12, 12 minutes past midday. I put in my email address, and I put in my temporary password. That was at 12 minutes past 12. At 17 minutes past 12, I got an email saying that my new account was created. So that's taking us from two weeks down to five minutes. So that's like four orders of magnitude, I think. So some of the improvements that we want to make. So like I said, security. Uh, so we, we uh, desperately need SSO on that website. That's scary as heck. Uh, we want some UX stuff as well. So at the moment, our, our error codes are a bit um, you know, not helpful. We've got a lot of spinning wheels. It takes about five minutes for the account to create, and there's a spinning wheel for a lot of that. Some provisioning features as well. So do we want users to have to have a budget code before they can create an account? Does the, the cloud team need to be informed when new accounts are created? Uh, what do we want to do about the, the organization's limits, the service limits? So do we want a, a service ticket to be raised automatically when we're nearing the, the service limits? 
So that takes me back to MH370. So this is one of the first accounts that we created using this new method. And they've, just, they've gone bonkers in this new account. The whole point of this is enablement. So we're getting the right tools, the right resources, the compute resources, the storage in the hands of our smartest people, and then just letting them go at it. Um, and they've gone off, and they've done a whole bunch of crazy work with uh, EMR, with CITUS, um, doing incredible 3D visualizations of, uh, uh, of the, the, the sea floor off the coast of WA. So IT is no longer a blocker for us. I, IT is really leading the charge on getting the right tools in the right hands. Thanks.